and the mind can settle down with the breath, and the breath feels good throughout the body, and your mind can stay there consistently as a place where it can rest. This is medicine, both for the body and for the mind. But the breath going through the body means the circulation is going, going well. There's not a lot of tension that you're carrying around. So the different organs in the body get to function better. And as for the mind, it has this place where it can stay and it's not feeling threatened that it has to move all the time. Otherwise, it's like a cat jumping around from one piece of furniture in the house to another, to the, to the metal piece and then to the clock and whatever. As soon as it lands, it tenses up to jump again because it knows that it's going to have to leave. The mind is that has that relationship to the things of the world because it knows they're going to change. There's no really good place out there where you can rest. Let the mind really be at, a, at its ease. But here you can stay with the breath. It's just coming in and going out. And although there may be some pains in the body that would ordinarily push you out, you decide the way you're going to use the breath, you're going to use your sense of well-being that comes from the breath to work through the pain. So you get more re resilient to pain. And you can stay here with a sense of well-being in spite of there being pains here and there in the body. So both sides benefit. The body benefits, the mind benefits, and it gets healthier. It's not such a victim to the diseases that can so easily come up, greed, aversion, delusion. When your resistance is down, these things come in and take over. And they wreak havoc in the mind. It gets harder and harder to see things clearly, harder and harder to make wise decisions that will be for your long-term welfare and benefit. So you have to give the mind a place to stay. The concentration is symptom management, is not the cure. But if you can manage the symptoms, it's a lot easier to settle down and really look into what the real problem is. The real problem is our ignorance of the mind. The mind is ignorant of itself. You would think the thing that we would know best in the world would be our own minds, but it's a huge terror incognita. It's like those old maps they used to have where they would have the coastline of a continent but big white spaces in the middle. There's so much in the mind that we don't know. And it's because of that that we do foolish things, unskillful things which come around and harm us. It's because we're weak in the face of greed, aversion, and delusion. So as you work with the breath and get the mind to settle down with the breath, develop a good sense of belonging here, that this is your home. You're also strengthening your resistance. That's the best way to fight off a disease. When greed comes, you recognize it immediately. When anger comes, you recognize it immediately, even when there's just a tiny little blip in the mind. But you know that you can't let it take hold of the mind, otherwise it's like a fire. A tiny little spark, if you're not careful, can turn into a huge conflagration. A little blip of greed can suddenly ignite the mind. Anger can ignite the mind. So you have to be careful. That's when the mind is still like this, that you can see things a lot more clearly. And because of the strength that comes from the sense of well-being of settling in here, that raises the level of your resistance, so you're not as easily infected by the world.